crazy just to think back. I remember it was March 12th, 2020. We were at the office and we actually had a board meeting that day and we were all in person. And, you know, within like that, that day we were talking and we we're like, man, this COVID thing's really picking up. We should keep an eye out on it. And literally by that next day, I was calling up all the staff and saying, you know what, Monday, no one come in, we're, we're shut down. That, that was Monday when we said no one's coming in. And I'd say by that Wednesday, our staff converted all of our classes online. We reached out to all of our youth to make sure that they were okay, see what support they needed. And it was really just remarkable just to see our staff kind of pivot that quickly and really respond to community needs. We got computers out to youth that needed them. Some youth needed financial support. So we reached out to some donors and we got some funds to get out to the youth and their families. Um, but what we also heard was a lot of young people saying they were bored. And so a lot of our youth had a lot of time, including community college students. Um, so they were asking for more from the Nest, like, could we get more courses, more content? And instead, uh, our program team had the idea of like, instead of creating more stuff for them to do, why don't we get them organized and mobilized so that they can use their talents and their skills to address some of the community issues and challenges? Um, so that's when we launched Nest Core. So it was kind of a play like on Peace Corps, AmeriCorps. Uh, but it was, could we get nesters organized and mobilized to address community needs? We started having a lot of organizations reach out to us for help, whether it was Salud para la Gente saying, hey, there's not uh, content in Spanish, uh, can Digital Nest help? The school district saying, hey, graduations are coming up, what are we, can you help us with doing a virtual graduation? There was this huge kind of community kind of reach out to the Nest, and which is crazy because early on I was worried like, you know, is philanthropy gonna like stop giving money? About three weeks into the pandemic, all these executive directors of local nonprofits came together, really just for like support and just like, you know, how are you doing? How are we all hanging, like hanging in there? And what challenges are we facing? More of like a ED kind of roundtable support. Um, but we recognized that the, the poor communication around COVID was happening in this community. The resources weren't being directed out here. So we came together really to say how collectively can we kind of move that needle and not be competing for resources, not compete for, you know, for money or anything like that. What we did, there was about 10 nonprofits that said, let's collaboratively say, here are the needs that we see, here are the organizations that can provide the services to address those needs and fund us as a collaborative and not as individual organizations. And we did that and I think that was pretty instrumental in getting more dollars out to the communities where, where it needed. It blows me away, you know, because like we were so ahead of the game in terms of providing access and providing tools and getting youth the best technology, the best internet, the best staff to teach. Like that was the vision of the Nest when we launched this thing six years ago, you know, because we saw that problem that it existed. Um, and so when COVID hit, and now all of a sudden, the, the, all the youth were forced to be at home and learning. And all of a sudden people were like, oh my gosh, we need internet, we need access, you know, all that things. Like kids were being asked to turn, do, turn in homework before COVID online. So Google, the Google like Drive and Google, you know, the, kids were having to turn in homework before COVID online. But the way they were doing it was they would get their parents' phone, you know, put on a hotspot, upload their, their document and then get off the hotspot, you know? Um, and we actually, this school district, most of the kids had a one-on-one -on -one before COVID in terms of computers, they all had a Chromebook, right? Um, but they were turning in homework like really quickly through the parents' hotspot. So people didn't know the extent of the divide, you know? Um, or they were going to the library and uploading, like getting onto the Wi-Fi and uploading their work, right? Um, but when COVID hit, and when students were expected to be online all day, you know, for you know, four or five hours, um, that's when all of a sudden people outside of NAS and outside of uh, the ed education saw that there was a huge problem. Youth didn't have adequate internet at home. Um, they didn't have, if they had internet, there was being, the bandwidth was being pulled by multiple people in the household, um, including myself. You know, I got, I, I'm I probably, uh, really connected in this community around technology, but I had three kids at home learning and I was trying to work at home. My internet was going all over the place. Now I had the resources to up my, my bandwidth and get more bandwidth, 
but that wasn't for a majority of this population that that is a luxury that they didn't they couldn't afford you know so they didn't have adequate bandwidth they didn't have um, adequate technology uh, they were limited to their Chromebooks and so if they wanted to do anything more creative and or more technical they couldn't do it um, and they didn't have the parent support there to help them kind of figure out how to how to actually be productive online. We were, we were prepared because we've been doing this work for the last six years. Again, we said, well, well what can we do? Well, we have 150 computers across Watsonville and Salinas. Let's get all those out. Like, let's get them, like, they're no good just sitting in the cabinet. Let's get them out to youth that need them. So most of those went to college students and to high school students. Um, but then what else can we do? Well, we have connections with companies like Poly. So let's get headphones out to students, you know, so they could focus. Um, we have, act, we have uh, relationships with Adobe. Let's get licenses out so students can still learn and challenge themselves at home and with the create, Adobe Creative Suite. Um, so we just really use our network and our, res and our resources to say, how do we get those in the hands of youth even when they're sheltering at home? Organizations like Digital Nest and other nonprofits are not just charity. You know, like, I think that's one thing we realized with COVID. Look at Second Harvest Food Bank and how many people they're feeding. Look at PVPSA and how they're supporting you know, the mental health of our students, you know, look at um, education nonprofits, art nonprofits that are still, you know, arts and are still like sparking culture and community and bringing people together around art, you know, and so I think people need to shift their mentality around they fund nonprofits, like really, how do you invest in nonprofits, like, uh, and make them an essential service, you know, essential service to build community, to, to support youth and, um, you know, I think if we do that, if we invest, if we invest in nonprofits the way we invest in business and technology, then we'll address a lot of the problems that those industries have created.